This series of lessons introduces the culminating experience. Students' goal is to develop a solution to make smartphones more sustainable. Being sustainable relates to the cross-cutting concept of energy and matter. When a scientist thinks about energy and matter in any context, it prompts them to ask three generic questions every time. Where does the energy and matter come from? Where does it go next? And does the energy and matter change forms along the way? You can practically understand anything in science if you can answer these three questions. Sustainability is a special case of the energy and matter cross-cutting concept. It's about a shift in the energy or matter sources, waste production, and impacts of the environment of those two. There are many ways that your students can make smartphones more sustainable, so let's see how they fit into this diagram affecting the source or waste streams. We could build phones using less toxic materials. That's about the source of the materials. We could recycle old phones. That means they're not going in the landfill. That affects the waste stream. We could use recycled metal. Again, what inputs were going into the source. We could cut emissions from making phones by using solar power. Well, that's about the waste that's produced. As We could use better glass so that phones last longer. Well, that affects the source and it helps our phones last longer so that there's less waste. So keep this diagram in mind throughout the culminating experience. Be sure to check out our PDF Culminating Experience Teacher Guide in Lesson 1.20. It's an online-only exclusive. It's not in the printed teacher guide. We'll walk through some of the key pieces right now. It's got thought starters to help inspire students to come up with some creative solutions, example student work, and our detailed rubric with categories for each of the three NGSS dimensions. In addition to proposing a solution, the students actually need to communicate their solution using a brochure. The brochure has six panels with specific requirements for each panel. On page one, they have a title for their solution and a brief image, and then they address the question, what is sustainability? On page two, they describe the life cycle of a smartphone. Page three is where they get to describe their solution in depth and how it fits into that life cycle. How does the solution make the phone more sustainable? Again, thinking about our diagram of sources and waste. And what specific benefits to the environment do you expect? Page five is a science assessment where they report their understanding about the uneven distribution of mineral resources on Earth. And page six, they share their references. How does that look lesson by lesson? Well, in 1.20, students start off by checking back in with the unit roadmap, and then they watch a news story about smartphone waste and read about the entire smartphone life cycle. There's a brief presentation about a scientist whose research is to make phones more sustainable, and then they brainstorm their own solutions. A worksheet scaffolds this process, and the teacher can use the thought starters to inspire creativity. In Lesson 1.21, the warm-up is about the concept of repurposing as students consider all the things they could do with an empty shoebox. We distribute and discuss the guidelines for the brochure project, and then set groups to work on a mock-up of their brochure that communicates their solution. In Lesson 1.22, students finish their brochure mock-ups and then peer-review other teams. In addition to prompts about the communication in the brochure, we encourage students to analyze the solution itself. Can they identify how it influences the source or waste streams? And has the group given enough specific details about how their solution helps the environment? Days 23 and 24 are work days. Students self-assess using the project rubric, they revise their brochures based on the peer feedback, and they prepare their final submission. On day 25, students share their pamphlets in a gallery walk and vote for the best of categories, including most educational pamphlet, most creative solution, best pamphlet title, and best pamphlet design. Students spend the rest of the class reflecting on the culminating experience. Research shows that taking the time to reflect on our learning solidifies it. So we scaffold this process with a series of questions in a creative think-pair-share format that we call back-to-front processing. Students stand up and find a partner, they stand back to back, and the teacher poses a question. After some quiet think time, the teacher calls out, front to front, and they take turns discussing the prompt. After a few students share out with the whole class, they move around and find a new partner for the next prompt. Day 26 is the unit post-assessment, and students continue reflecting by considering the consequences, both positive and negative, of smartphone technology. Students are going to build on their understanding of energy and matter and sustainability from the minerals unit in the next unit about petroleum.